Convocation and Pledge of Allegiance. Good evening, everyone, by the way. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear God, keep our community safe, keep our armed forces safe, and God bless America. Amen. Amen. Um, I move approval of the agenda. I mean, roll call. I'm sorry, I'm too questioning too much. <coughs> Ms. Lease. Ah, uh, here. Mr. Beck. Here. Mr. Bryan. Here. I move approval of the agenda. Second. Roll call. Mr. Beck. Aye. Mr. Bryan. Aye. Ms. Lease. Aye. Um, approval of minutes. We have none. Fiscal officers report, we have none. Presentations, we have none. Public hearing, we have none. So we're moving into old business. I move approval of resolution G2022-52. Resolution to approve tech amendments to section 31 definition, section 51 general provision, section 94 transitional regulations, section 104 and 105E residential district, section 115F lighting industrial district, section 24G heavy industrial district, section 134H riverfront district, Section 135 Double D Plan Multifamily Residential District, Section 136 Double Zero Plan Residential <coughs> District, 137 Double E Plan Residential District, Section 138 Double F Plan District, Lighting, let's see, Plan District, Lighting Industrial District, Section 139 Double G Plan Heavy Industrial District, Section 143 Point two, shared parking, section 146, outdoor lighting, section 171, additional use, height and area regulations and exceptions, section 320.4, section 321.5, variable message sign regulation, section 386, specific criteria pertaining to conditional use, and table 35-1 of Sims Township zoning resolution and dispensing with the second reading. Second. Discussion. That was a lot to read. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, discussion. Who wants to tee it up? Uh, I have some comments specific to the specific criteria pertaining to conditional uses. Okay which would be section 10. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, Kim, but uh, I believe Brian Snyder recommended the eight criteria that's listed. Did that come from our zoning? Yes, residential use chart. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, section 10. Table 35-1. Yep. So he recommended the first six, the F, H, M, P2, S, and X. Is that seven? No, six. Six. And then we added the I, I, and the J, J. Right. That's correct. Right. Okay. Um, F is, uh, pertains to parking. Um, which I'm total agreement with. H pertains to vehicular use. <coughs> totally agree with. Um, there's a section I would propose to add L, which pertains to noise and odor. M uh, pertains to no exterior alterations, which I agree with. P, uh, the, recomm the recommendation is P2 which uh, states one sign is permitted. I would like to, I propose to have that change to P1, no signs. I don't see why we need a sign in front of an Airbnb in a residential district. And then S is, uh, pertains to exterior lighting, which I agree with, including the foot candles. Um, I'd like to propose that we add T, which includes specific, um, it documents indicating the need for the facility, 
and the specific clientele it will serve. So in other words, it puts the burden on the property owner to pre-plan the usage of a short-term rental. Um, I would like to include V, which says the applicant shall provide a plan indicating the manner in which the facility will maintain contact with neighborhood residents along with a structured procedure whereby their grievances may be filed and resolved. I think if we had that in place, we may have been able to avoid some of the issues that we've had over the past year, potentially. Uh, but nonetheless, I think it's, it's a step in the right direction. Um, I'd like to include W, which pertains to refuge collection, a refuge collection plan, because part of our issue is trash cans being hauled out too early or sitting out too long after they've been picked up. Um, they've added X, which I'm not going to make an issue of, except I don't think it really applies because it, it pertains to meals shall be served only to guests or residents, not to the general public. I think that pertains more to a bed and breakfast, but um, regardless. Uh, I would like to add why. Um, it, why pertains to the intensity of a particular use shall be evaluated with regard to the location, size, and configuration of the track. And what this says to me is if this is used as a short-term rental, um, that it would be not a bad idea for the Loveland Sims Fire Department to review the maximum occupancy uh, determination for each facility so they're not overloaded. And uh, finally, Z uh, requests, I'd like to add Z, it requests an emergency response plan shall be submitted. So all these conditions, and then of course II is the property insurance that we talked about, and JJ um, screening as required. I agree with those. Okay, I have a quick question about why. So if we would a maximum occupancy, how do you, how do you enforce police it? that? Yeah. Well, at the very least, you'd have a sign up on the wall, just like any other business. Like we have back there. Right. <coughs> And so L is noise and odor, but don't we already have noise ordinance in our township? Yes, but does did you bring a copy with you, Bill, of what else actually says? Measures shall be taken to minimize the impact of potential nuisances such as noise, odor, odor vibration, and dust on adjacent properties. Okay. So in particular, it was noise and odor. Yes, we do have a noise resolution. That's correct. I guess, would that mean, Jeff, if, if it says noise, would it be enforceable any time? And I mean, not just from 11 to 7, but any time? Well, <coughs> our noise resolution has time restrictions of when those noise limitations apply. Right. But if, if you were to add L, uh, as one of the specific criteria, then that could, that would be something that would be more specifically probably th um, described if a conditional use permit is granted. And yes, it might it it might mean different, you know, longer uh, time when it might apply. It might it it could be anything. I think the point is, yes, we have a general noise resolution in place. By adding this as a condition, it could be. Uh, I, I'm going to say stricter even this or this is basically a tool when they come bef before zoning that the zoning could say you have to do yeah or zoning could say ignore it or whatever well I it think just gives well zoning more tools is that what this is what we're saying? if it if, yes yes and the point would be if L is added to this when a short-term rental goes before the Board of Zoning Appeals for a conditional use permit, 
they would have to present something that says, here's how we intend to address letter L. Yeah. And well then that's the. like a business plan. Kind of, yeah. And then the board can either say that's good enough <coughs> for us or no, we want it to be more, you know, we want something different. Okay. So, I mean, T specific, like clientele, I mean, how would they present? I mean, how do we enforce what type of clientele they have? I mean, could that, I mean, is that even considered? I mean, do you have to say you have to have a clientele with a medium salary of $100,000? I mean, what, what exactly is that? I don't, not sure. How you can. Which one? Let's read it in. T. T. That's T. It reads documentation indicating the need for the facility comma, the specific clientele it will serve, and the location and type of similar facilities operated by the applicant shall be submitted as part of the application. <coughs> Again, right, this is not so much, um, I mean, it may be an enforcement issue later, but what these criteria really are about is this is what the applicant has to show going into it in order to qualify for the permit. So they would have to show What's the need for this facility here? Where are there other ones that are around here? What kind of clientele do you intend to? So they would have to make a, that part of their presentation okay. before it would even get approved. Okay. So you want to delete P2 and put P1 in this place? Yes. Okay. okay. P2, P1. And then just for the, for the board's general information, uh, per section 389, the period of validity is one year. So this is a one-year life if a conditional use is, is granted. And then the property owner, if they choose to extend that, they would have to go back to the Board of Zoning Appeals in some form or fashion. Hmm. Can we do that? Well, that's all. It's part of it. Subject to extension of time granted by the Board of Zoning Appeals, no conditional use zoning certificate shall be valid for a period longer than one year unless a building permit is issued. right I just I just want to be clear what that means is once a building permit is issued that one year limitation goes away, goes away. If that's if the point of that section is if someone for example just to keep it with short if yeah exactly if someone came and their purpose was to build a new building for a short-term rental and we granted them the conditional use that's only good for a year but once they get their building permit and build it, that one-year limitation goes away. Okay. But if they're just using an, an existing house? Then, then there's already been a, a building permit issued, and that one-year limitation wouldn't apply. Okay. That's really for new construction, something that gets a conditional use permit before it's even built. Okay. So what I'm interested in is having a one-year duration for a conditional use so that it's not forever. It's renewable. Right. And we have a clawback if we have problems. Can we do that? I, I'm not sure that you can do that, generally speaking. Once you go through the process to get a conditional use permit, it's something that runs with the land and the use of the property. Um, I if the use of the property were going to change, then then I could see that the that it would expire and if it then if it changed uh, here's my I'm going to use this as an example <coughs> a short-term rental gets a conditional use permit to be a short-term rental um, and then the owner sells it to somebody else and they don't use it as a short-term rental anymore they they just live there as a traditional residential house and then down the road if they decide they want to turn it into a short-term rental they would have to come back and go through the whole process again because the use changed and they would have to get a, con a new conditional use permit. I'm not, I, I've never seen um, having basically like a, a sunset uh, period for a conditional use permit where you, the way you address it is if there are complaints, if there are issues, if there are, if there's evidence that people are not complying with the terms of the conditional use then that's how you deal with it you then you can revoke you go through a process to revoke the conditional use permit right. which is section 388 yes. yes okay okay all right and then I just have a general question and then I'll shut up um, 
So a conditional use permit, I assume, has a cost associated with it. Do, do we know that it yeah. does? You have to go before the board to get it. So I mean, there, there's an application fee. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Okay. So I've seen this issue downtown where uh, where apartments, which were intended for longer term duration, uh, the vacancy rate dipped a little bit. So the property owner decided to open that up for essentially as an Airbnb. That was the concept. And uh, the jurisdictions downtown, plural, were curious why they weren't getting hotel tax. And it pretty much stopped it. Um, there may have been other factors involved, like maybe vacancy went, or vacancy went down and it was no longer a need. But my question is, are we missing out on a hotel tax with this? Or should we, if we don't want to get into the business of pursuing hotel tax, can we simply come up with a fair assessment and add that to the condi conditional use cost? Let me let's work backwards <laughs> as far as the, like the the fee or anything for the, an application fee um, The general law is that an application fee is only supposed to be whatever the amount is that's necessary to cover the administrative costs of of Whatever it is that you're collecting the fee for um, We have a fee for conditional use permit applications Unless you can articulate why it would cost more from an administrative standpoint to process a short-term rental conditional use permit, you, you really can't treat them differently. You can't add or, or increase the fee unless you can articulate um, a, a reason why. And what I, what I typically see is that wouldn't happen until later. It, it, what I mean by that is it would start with just the same conditional use permit fee like any other conditional use permit. Mm -hmm. If after processing some for some period of time, staff can then say, actually, we can now articulate why it is more expensive or it co takes more staff time or whatever, um, then it may be possible to increase that that fee. But I don't know that we can articulate any of that now. So why aren't we collecting hotel tax? Because well, that's basically uh, what it is. because they, I, I mean, in part, because it doesn't meet the definition of hotel motel okay. um, under that tax provision. So, so what about an occupancy tax? I, well, again, townships only have the authority to impose yeah. taxes that the state allows for. I'm not aware of any general occupancy tax that the state provides for that would have the authority for townships. Um, Bed and breakfast do not have to pay tax? I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I can tell you in part, and it won't make any difference if this is adopted the way that it's being proposed, but I mean, if you look back at what happened at the Board of Zoning Appeals during that administrative appeal, the, the Board of Zoning Appeals decision or recommendation, or their, actually their decision was to treat um, short-term rentals as hotels. If, if that had been done, I think you would at least have a better argument about why they would have to be, be responsible to pay yeah. that, that hotel motel tax. Um, that's, we're not treating them as hotels under this, you know, um, this new proposed code provision. And, and I guess what I, finally what I'll say is I don't know whether bed and bre or, uh, Airbnb short-term rentals pay uh, hotel or motel tax in other jurisdictions or not. Okay. But if they don't, I would assume it's because it doesn't meet the definition of what qualifies under that tax. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> Uh, 
I mean, the, the, the public hearing is closed, wow. and you're in, a, a, and, and right now there's a motion and a second on the floor, and you're in discussion. I, I mean, the board always has the okay. ability, if, if you want to open it up. It's if quick and, yeah. My question is, if, if the definition classification as a hotel is maintained by Hamilton County Appeals, when they appeal that ruling, does that mean that the, the short-term rental is nope. a short-term rental and a hotel? No. Nope. No, I, I mean, really, while that appeal has been pending, depending I'm sorry is it okay, okay if I, <laughs> I should have asked sure. is it okay if I address that if once some version of this new zoning amendment is is adopted um, really what's happening in Hamilton County is going to it's it's not going to apply to anything anymore because that case was only about the interpretation of the code while the code was silent on short-term rentals. Once this is adopted, in whatever form it finally takes, this will control how short-term rentals, so how they're addressed. And really that case, that on appeal, may, may not have any impact really at all. Yeah. Okay, so I'm okay with Phil's changes. Are you okay with Phil's changes? Yeah. Okay, so okay. I'm gonna let him read the changes. Uh, and actually, if I could, what I would suggest is, because there's been a motion to adopt with the second, the appropriate thing would be to make a motion to amend the resolution ho however you see fit. Yes, thank you. I make a motion to amend the, uh, the motion specific to resolution G2022-52, specific to uh, short-term uses, um, but conditional uses and those the list of those are F H L M P one S T V W Y Z I I and J J. And you're taking away P two. Taking away P two. Are you taking away X? You're taking away X. You didn't say you skip X. that one. X has to do with meals to be served only to guests or residents of the facility. I guess we can add X, sure. Okay. I don't see Just how it's address it in their application. That's all, sure. that's all we're asking. Okay. Yes. All right. So uh, I second. And so now. And now you can take a roll call vote on the amendment. On the mm -hmm. amendment, roll call. Mr. Bryant. Aye. Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. Okay. So that amendment passes. So now that has been incorporated into the version that, it, that is still on the floor. Um, and so now I have to make a motion for that. No, it, no it's, it's already, already been a motion okay. to adopt. It essentially has just now been converted to a motion to adopt as amended. Okay. I don't know if there are other uh, amendments or any other discussion on any of the other points. Okay. Um, but if not, then it's just ready to vote. Ready to vote. Roll call. I, I don't have any others. <laughs> Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. Mr. Bryant. Aye. I move to not request a hearing for a liquor permit for Thornton's LLC 12106 Montgomery Road, Sims Township, Cincinnati. Why is it Sims Township, Cincinnati, Ohio? 45249. Second. Roll call. Mr. Beck. Aye. Mr. Bryant. Aye. Ms. Lease. Aye. I move to reschedule the public hearing for the tax budget to Tuesday, June 14, 2022 at 7.05 p.m. Second. Uh, discussion? Roll call? Mr. Bryant. Aye. Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. Uh, no, biz no new business, so I think. And there's no executive hearing, so I move to adjourn. Second. Roll call? Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. Mr. Bryan. Aye. All right. Thank you for coming. Thanks for all your input. Thank you.
Roll call. Mr. Beck. Aye. Mr. Bryan. Aye. Ms. Lee. Aye. Turn your mic on. Camp Dennis and Landscape Plan. Okay. Um, I had sent out a couple emails just for F FYI, but um, when I had contacted the county about the parcels in question in Camp Denison, there's two parcels. So you've got the one to make up the triangle. You've got the piece that the cannon's on that's owned by this defunct memorial association. And then you've got this other piece that the auditor's parcel information says that it's owned by Hamilton County. Now, when I sent, when I contacted the county in hopes of getting a copy of the maintenance agreement, I was told by the clerk of the board that the county engineer would have that particular paperwork. So I waited about a week and then I contacted the county engineer and I said, hey, can you guys send me this maintenance agreement? And then I got back this long email saying that there's a question about the ownership of the parcel that they don't think the county owns it. So. Parcel. No, this is the triangle. that triangle, the one triangle piece. So it would okay. be that. Yeah, I know which one we're talking about. The one that's on one, the 126 side. So then I went to the files, and it's interesting when I look at the files from 1997. There's an, a memo in there that says that that I guess it was CW believes that it was owned by the Village of Indian Hill. So when I saw that, then I was like, then I called up Jeff and I was like, I think you guys need to do a title search to figure out who owns this property and who do I need to talk to <laughs> to try to get ownership of it or get a maintenance agreement of it. The Memorial Association, we checked into what um, one of the residents had said at the last meeting. Um, we don't own it. We don't have a maintenance agreement on it. None of the paperwork was ever filed with the court. Um, we did find two resolutions from 2000. Um, the, the three of us signed. Yes, yeah. but nothing was ever done with it. You mean Who was the Eric Beck never signed off or Ted Hubbard never signed off? No, it was never filed in court. Okay. So we don't own it by adverse right. possession. We don't own a maintenance agreement over so, it. So we're starting at ground zero. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So. Uh, I'll tell you what I would like to see somewhere along the line with the two with the split in the road right now and if, if we were to hypothetically the county would want to do a perpendicular of Kilgore is it into 126 I'd like to see where that's Coogler Mill a layout you of mean Coogler Mill yeah, yeah Coogler Mill I'm sorry. yes I'd like to see just a sketch so we know what the area is we're talking about trying to get our arms around it to, to put something there okay i mean that's like putting a horse before the cart i think and then we can talk about what we put in there and how much it costs but right now we're wrapped up in well i thought i was making gr headway but <laughs> we, we went backwards <laughs> yeah went backwards there's no sign off and yeah. You throw in this particular thing of Indian Hill, that's another player Yeah. that we've not considered. Because I had sent an email to the county, and well, I sent it to Holly, and I said, hey, you know, if you guys do own this, can you guys, you know, let us have a maintenance over top of it, or just give it to just us, give it to us yeah. because you don't need it for anything. You guys don't maintain it. We maintain it, mm -hmm. so just give it to us. And they can give us the road at the same time. Hopefully, yes. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I like that idea. <clears throat> but seriously, I'd like to see a sketch of what the area is once it's all settled. We can discuss it. I think we should just go for it. Okay, that's what I, mean, I figured. I'm, I'm not talking about an architectural. So we, we can figure out how to get an agreement. Right, or own it, or own it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, what we talked to Barbara about in the last meeting you know, is Cougar Mill heads towards 126 and then splits yes. right. and then intersects 126 correct so that creates the triangle and so we can come up with a landscape plan now for the triangle i think what we want to do but you just keep just to your point you keep kugler mill you keep a swath that goes straight into 126 and we don't put a big tree there because yeah. otherwise we're going to dig the big tree out 
Well, we did. So just kind of keep we that put trees there that once. Zone. <laughs> and are they not there anymore? Yeah, they're still there. In 2014, there is yeah, there is a true. landscape plan that yeah. I found. It's just hodgepodge. It yeah. Look very attractive. Right. And, and so that's what they're. So asking. wait wait a minute now. I'm thinking. We just um, put bought trees. But if we if we were to take those trees out, would they satisfy the ODNR location? If we took the trees out that's there now. Can we put them in the other place? Transplant them? Yeah. Oh. They're not the same trees. They're small little ornamental trees. They yeah. Look right. Okay. Yeah. Well, the can, thing we, can we in, at least incorporate them in this development plan? We did. We incorporated okay. them in this landscaping plan. Okay. We just moved other things around okay. but kept the trees. Okay. Can we talk budget for this thing and where the money might come from? Yeah. That was the other thing. It's. Because in that resolution, it deemed it a memorial park. Okay. So in next year's budget, I have uh, I budgeted. I think it was like seventy-five thousand dollars. Seventy-five thousand dollars. Yeah. To do that. If you want to do the landscaping and the signage, and the and the planters and the benches and all that, it's it's about it's going to be about seventy-five. So I put it in the park budget. Okay. For now. Doesn't mean it has to stay there. I mean, if we well, do it, nothing's ever going to get done if you don't plan for it. So right, and that's where I—that's I, right. that's where I put it there to yeah. to start the discussion about it. Um, Remember that statement when we talk about administration building. <laughs> what something like that? If you don't plan for it, it won't happen. Yeah. Nothing happens if you don't plan for it. Correct. <laughs> So that's where it is right now. That doesn't mean it has to stay there. I mean, it can be moved and pushed and whatever else, well, whatever you want to do. One thing I know we do a lot for like other areas of the township, and we, we don't really often do much down in Camp Dennis. So I think my, if we can make a nice little memorial park for them and invest in, in the area down there, I think it's good for them. So I, the 75,000 is not necessarily bothering me. I just want to make sure that we do something nice and oh, I'm probably not going to get to me. We do well, something yeah. nice and, and then we my shop it to the land to maintain yeah, it. Right. Somebody who owns it can't go yeah. by and say get that shit out of here. Yeah. Right. And, and I'd like to like include some maybe tables, like in there are there places that we can put like, We benches. put benches. Yeah, there's the there's like places the in there for benches. With umbrellas that we might be able we to We could, yeah. yeah. Especially if we get that extra, right. like if Kugler Mill gets vacated, that would be a perfect spot for it. Keep it as far away from the road as possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, $75,000 bothers me only because I haven't done landscaping lately. So, yeah. and I'm shocked. It's yeah. really the expensive. Everything. It's everything's expen expensive. Everything's expensive okay. right now. That's mm -hmm. the bad part. I know that we ripped all our landscaping out in front of our house and it completely redid it and it was like four grand. It's I'll probably it's probably now. double yeah, that now. Yeah. I put in six like six seven years nine ago. Nine arborvitaes oh. on the side of my yard. It's okay. ten grand. Arborvitaes? Trust it. I mean, they can grow real tall. If you want. Ten grand, geez, at least. Okay, so let's start and see if we can acquire the land and get the street. Okay. Figure out how to do that, and then, I mean, once we get that, we'll look at landscape plans. Okay. okay. So, so uh, can I ask a question real quick? So what do we need to do to the, for the county engineer's office? Do we need to pass a resolution to ask the county engineer's office to vacate Kugler Mill, that portion of it? Because I know we probably have to take some kind of official action if we're the ones. I'm honestly not sure. What, okay. Not I, sure I, I think, the, step steps step are, I think okay. the steps are a little different. I think that this title search is first and oh, yeah. foremost, foremost right. what we do so we can identify who the owner is and then we pass a resolution or whatever and send it to them tell them what we want to do right. okay okay but we i don't i don't know we know who to send it to right now yeah <laughs> right and then do you guys want me to have jeff i mean do you want me to bring back a resolution at the next meeting authorizing him to do this adverse possession on that piece that's on defunct Oops. And you mean we're gonna we're gonna petition to to own it? Is what you mean? Right. We'd have to petition the court. From a defunct organization. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because um, obviously the paperwork was never filed back in two thousand. I, I, I still think. Who was that? 
we definitely know what the parcel number is and that the yeah. Hamilton County Memorial Society or whatever the heck the Memorial name Association is. Yep. Memorial Association is now defunct mm -hmm. do we know anybody that was on that board no, but they, he does, he went looking back through all his paperwork and he could not find anything. I went searching in our files and I could not find anything. Okay. But the title, Hamilton County Memorial. <laughs> Hamil <laughs> Hamilton County. I would bring that up next. I mean. Jeff tried to find information on it. He Googled it. He's tried looking in every pa place he could think of and he can't find anything on them. But Carol insisted we own it. Which, so. which we don't. Yeah. So, and and actually, the resolution never asked for ownership. It just said to try to get a maintenance, a maintenance agreement. Right. Yes. right. Okay. So let's start All right. there. Okay. All right. Is that is that done? Yep. yep. Okay. New business: Seven Gable Place structure replacement. Oh my God, that is the coolest place that I've ever seen. I realize it's expensive, so. Uh, did, you, did you add up the number? I did. I did. Was, okay. Well, it? let me let me just tell you first. When we met with them, Kim and I are like, we have like what? What did I say? Two fifty? Yeah. About two fifty. <laughs> He's like, well, let's do it this way. He's a great salesman, but he <laughs> he designed a heck of a playset. He's like, I'm going to give you a million dollar playset, and then we'll whittle it down to fit your needs. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> However you want to do it, but I know well, I got a budget. <laughs> I looked at this thing and it said it costs three two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand just for the for the mat that you slide down onto because the area was so big. Right. So uh, obviously we're going to have to scale it back and you know start with the main place structures and then if you know I would suggest that when we do the the flooring that we make it bigger so we can add on to it in a few years if we want to add on to it because I mean that would be magnificent for that area and again we don't do too much on that side of Sims Township we tend to focus more on the park area which is up on Hopewell which is you know home of the brave Sims Park Mead all our parks tend to be on one side of the township and so giving that area a uh, place structure first of all would probably help i not that we need the housing costs but that would be a huge selling point for some of those areas around there an uh, uh, incredible place structure that's like a destination place at hmm. and so that would be i think helpful for people to sell their homes I but i agree we should cut it back i mean i i, I don't see any swings in there oh yeah there's swings yeah, yeah there's swings over here, over here there's swings Over here, right here. You see it? Oh, okay. Yeah, there's swings. I didn't so, get to that page. I yeah, so um, maybe cut it down. But I think we, when we do the, I know it's AstroTurf, right? I think we should make it maybe not as big, but I think we should make it bigger so we can add stuff as years go. Relative to the footprint that's there now, I agree with making it bigger. Okay. Yes. I mean, Ken, wouldn't you, I mean, well, if you go to sell your house, don't you think a family would probably move in your house and having a play structure like this, wouldn't that be a huge selling point? Yes. Yes. I think that I'll probably sell my house before this is done. Pro well, maybe not. I don't know. Like I so I think hey, we be should be optimistic. I think we should like aim not huge, but I think we should aim bigger than just that one structure playset. Well, I was going to say do you want to do the swings and the big structure playset first and then we can just kind of work around, but I know that we've talked to Odd about getting the uh, the, the fi fire little fire station and, and he said he would. Okay. Yeah. Is that and, in there? And I'm I like doing this I like Personally, I Six, wouldn't be uh, opposed to having some open okay, area for a while so kids can sit on the area and play. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if we leave some of it, that would be okay for now. I mean, that would be for tag and, you know, duck, duck, goose and whatever they wanted to play. We just need, if we're going to have this, we're probably going to have to work on our picnic structure because a lot of people are going to want to rent that. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
make it bigger. Yep. Yeah. So we're talking about this area right at first. This and that. Those are yeah. the big building structure with so the slide and the swings. Where does the current walkway? So Ken was it what Where was is the current walkway? Here? That I don't know. I don't know where it is in relation. Yeah, and he has to put some sign that says Simsville. Okay. okay. Admin about that. Um. <laughs> you can stick uh. it on anything he wants, but it's going to be on there. Okay. Okay. So we got two hundred thousand or so from the state grant, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. We, we got probably some other money here and there, but we went for a, a grant that we have heard anything back on yet? In June. Or what? You talking what? about the capital one? No, that was a 200K. Right. It? So I'm going to have K submit another ODNR grant okay. to try to get us more money okay. for this. Okay. It is, what's the plan on the paving? The, I got an estimate on that, and that's the one I'm going to submit I mean, a block grant for. That one scares me too because it's what the 70 grand or something? It's like 61. It's really yeah. not that but hateful. But you go wide and everything to eight, eight feet. feet. Okay. Yep. All right. So it's going to be ADA. Yeah, it's not. It's not hateful. I it's didn't think. Still in the plan. I guess is my question. Yes. Yeah, it's not included in this estimate, but I was going to do it separate. Okay. Timing wise, is it going to be sooner or later? Yeah, I was hoping to do the trail first, and then once we get hit the go button on. You know this grant I stuff. I also like that if you're going to do this kind of uh, equipment in that park, uh, the point was brought up. I think by Phil that we're going to maybe Jody. We're going to do something with this shelter. Mm -hmm. It's small. Jody. It's fun. It's yeah. used. I mean, we rent it out for forty or fifty dollars, right? So yeah. Like yeah, and I, you know, we're going to have to upscale it if we have this. Yeah. <laughs> it would look pretty bad if we didn't <laughs> have okay. to have place structure. Um, shelter and then we have this <laughs> how many just out of curiosity you know how many parking spaces are there I'm guessing 50, 50. okay maybe a little bit more well they we always just, we can park across the street here oh that's true yeah, we, we just got parking spot parking here. Lot. yeah so we have to do overflow parking <coughs> here okay okay so <coughs> so we're gonna go back now and work with somebody to say we want to do this in phases yeah he he already knew that yeah okay we i mean we made that very can, clear can up front something <coughs> that, i mean we're taking the that main place structure first we're taking the the equipment out right oh yeah, yes it's got to go okay. it's we've no, got I mean, it scheduled to go out i think it's like right after memorial day we had to get a dumpster and then we have okay. to get it from a special place because so we have to recycle the, the metal something else in there What's that? What's the timing on putting something else in? It just depends on when we get the money. Usually that capital grant money is not available till after July 1st. And same with block grant money is not available till after July 1st. Okay. So then we have to wait for the grant agreements to come from ODNR. Yeah. And then ODNR won't decide yeah. on their Maybe. part of it until probably August. So we probably won't see any kind of grant agreements until like September. Okay. I'd like to... Uh, I'd like to comment that if this is going to be done in phases, mm -hmm. well, we're going to be working on this for here. several years. <laughs> we got to get it while and, we can. And mm -hmm. what we're thinking about for Belong is going to be pushed back. Well, yeah, it'll probably, probably have to be that way. And it, everybody okay. agree to that? So slide. Belong's going to have to be pushed back in order Swing. to get this done over several years. Well, no, because you can do a little bit of blong and a little bit of this and a little bit of blong, a little bit of this. I mean, we can't like say that we're gonna. We, I mean, we can look at it when we get it. Do you know what I mean? As we go, we don't have All to right. say that we're not going to do blong. I mean, we might come into another grant. We don't know. I'm all for that. So we just we'll just play it by ear. I'm not going to overspend, Ken. I realize. We but want to be a tax and spend I board of trustees here. I'm not going to overspend. I think I do a pretty good job of scaling back things. I think mean, you guys are very frugal. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, if frugal. we're going to do something, I think it needs to be done right, and it needs yeah. to be done to Sims Township standards. And that's what I've always preached. 
Okay. We live in a great community. Okay, but I'll bring it back. I'll like when we when I ask him to like price it out individually. We'll okay. see how that shakes out. Give as much okay. as you can the first round. Okay. <laughs> okay. And you'll have our business for a very long time. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It, it wasn't on our agenda, but oh, Sims Park slides. Yeah. Okay. Um, is it truly in Sims Park? Where? Well, we don't have them. We want to add them. We would like to add this. So this would be in the like the yeah, hillside. Where the sled is. Sled Not area. the sled hill, but it's where we put all the pumpkins. Yeah. Okay. It's not a this looks a yeah. lot bigger okay. than it is. Would, yeah. Would, would somebody enlighten me about this thing? What is it? They're just become really popular. It's a, It's just a slide. Is slide. it a water slide? No, is no, it? no. It's just a regular slide. And so the kids would go to the top of it. And what we were thinking about doing, when Jody and I were talking about it, we were thinking about maybe putting a rope down the side of it. and the, Or maybe eventually we could put steps up it so oh, the kids can climb up. the steps right. to get back up okay or you know however I, I we want to do that. it i can see that it's just something but what do you slide on just in your clothes just or on you your take clothes a piece of cardboard and just on, on your clothes it's just okay. a regular slide mm -hmm. okay yeah just and there's different types it, that's okay just probably right. a virtual well, this, one. Is that the, the one, one that's the one that's shown yeah. worries me the what this Why? this one worries me because you come sliding down this thing and all of a sudden you hit Hit this turn. I'm sure they've done oh. their due diligence. But yeah. I mean, you can do a. So you think they're going to get stuck? No, I think they're going to wham into the side of it. The pretty sharp corner there. So I I know that this is just concept. I'm just pointing out that what I see in this concept okay. worries me a little. So we we'll take that into consideration. It might not be as sharp as you think. I mean, that doesn't look that very one? sharp to me. It just not from that angle. Look at it from this angle. To me, it just looks like like a what you know. I don't think they're going to get slammed. I don't think they would design a slide well, with a kid. I think what I'm seeing here <laughs> is that this one is. Well, it's just it's just a funky it's just a funky angle. But they're not all the same. Yeah, it's a funky angle. They just have that's like yeah. an overhead, yeah. like from the side view. Sure but this is an overhead from this the top. This one I understand. You start, and you get this shows this shows a bend. This if you look at this one as the master, okay, you hit this bend, but you're not going that fast. Okay. Just the so just we can just ask them to make sure that people aren't going to slam into the side. I don't think that they would yeah, like this. Design also. something like that, but okay. yeah. It's just not, All right. It's not very good. Concept, concept wise. Yeah, it's just a weird angle just, from where they've. Yeah. Concept wise, let's just make it safe so we're not banging into the, into okay. the wall. Okay. So is this concept is fine. Fiberglass or what's it made out of? I would mm. guess. Uh, you know, I've, I I've don't seen, know. I can ask them. I've seen some things sure in uh, in New England don't get stuck. I mean, you don't that stop. they actually you have. Burn. Um, some of them too. burn too. In New England, they have something a ride, pretty long, and I guess you have to pay to go on it. But there is like a yeah. vehicle you sit in. An alpine slide. Oh, alpine slide. Oh. Thank you. Or to bog in the winter. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. You'd have to bring your own. Well, yeah, that's why I guess they rent them. Like a little sack that you sit in or whatever no, when no, you do no. that? No, almost like, a, like a little canoe or something. Oh, the sits, little sleds? Yeah, and you yeah. go back on the bar or whatever, and it raises it, and you go faster. Oh. So if, you let up, if you let up, it's almost like a brake. But if, if you pull back, more than pull back in your lap, the faster you go. Okay. And they're quite long. They come alpine slides come on a on a like a ski slope or something like that. Yeah. That they run in the summertime and when they ski in the winter. Okay. All right. I'll what, bring back what something. Is, what's one of those things cost? The slide it is twelve thousand four hundred sixty five dollars. Okay. The freight's thirty two hundred and the labor's forty two hundred. So we're okay. talking what, twenty thousand? Yeah, okay. I just look at her order magnitude. Okay. Yep. Okay. And then the last thing would be the <clears throat> the median for Montgomery Road. She put together a plan for that. So let's see. Yep. 
And they show us with all the different varieties and so on. Yeah, so I I went on the web, I went on the internet and like downloaded oh, the did. pictures right. of all everything of what they look like because when I I mean they're all low growing. Yeah. Okay, that's a concept and the idea. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so but basically I didn't know if you guys liked the plant species that she picked out and I didn't know if you liked how packed it is. I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of packing it. I mm -hmm. think there should be spaces in it, like grassy spaces well, in it. My but that's just my own personal this, this is exactly the same thing I said I didn't want to see. Yeah. From the standpoint that they did it in Deerfield yeah, right. going up Montgomery it Road. Matters. It's over populated if right. you will. And unless you have somebody coming through pruning these things every right. year they're going to grow into each other and there's much too much plant material right. there. So uh, I just wanted to know, are you guys okay with the plants that she picked out? And then I can tell her to scale back on, you know, and leave spaces. Well, I mean, if the intent is to not have to mow any grass at all, <laughs> this answers it. <laughs> but right. it creates a heck of a maintenance issue. Well, we could do rock, a little bit of mulch, you know, the plants. Well, yep. You know, we can do a variety of different materials right. to not have to mow anymore. I'm you know, I trust what you. Okay. How you pick it? I mean, I like the plants. Mm -hmm. I do too. Yeah. They have lots yeah. of different yeah. colors. Just make them; they're small to start out. With. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's small to start small. out. With. Yeah. Yeah, and it will be. It'll be small when you first start out with it. But. But I think if you guys are okay, I'll just go back to her and kind of tell her, hey, you know, break it up. Right. So that patches are larger, but then there's spaces in between, so it kind of yeah. breaks it up. Yeah, I like right. the idea of rocks. I do too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like the way well, Mason did it. I mean, I like the way Mason did it. Obviously, we can't plant the trees that they planted, but you yeah. know, I just like their. You know, is there like a big rock that says Sims Township on it, or is that? I don't right? know. I'll have to ask be, Odot be, if be we're allowed to do that. that. It's interesting on Montgomery Road. We're missing another divider sign. Okay. okay. We th those things I, get taken I mean, out every these almost things every week. Get hit. I can't yeah. believe how much they get hit. Yeah. I mean, we don't have any landscaping there or anything. We just got this sign that that says there's a divider there, and it sits at each end of, of the divider. And they keep getting hit. And they keep getting hit. Yeah, it's the third or fourth one in the last year. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> so okay. Maybe that's where the rock goes. Yeah. Yeah. Up front. I like that idea. Protect the plants. We can put a wall in like next to my house so people can bounce off of it and take out fire hydrants and a couple of telephone poles. <laughs> <laughs> and then that, that wall's been hit twice this year. And the one next to my house and the one that's up close to wow. at Seven Gables Park. Huh. These are all perennials, right? So they come back every yes. year. Yes. Yep. We don't have to replant Yep, so we don't have to replant no. them. Um, one thing I would like to mention, I sent it, just sent it out today. Um, we, we tried to fix the slide at Home of the Brave, and apparently it's unfixable. Like, they tried to make the repair, and so they're going to have to, in order to repair it, it looks like they may have to replace the whole thing, which is a concrete structure. So I don't know what you guys want to do with that. I mean, we'll get replacement costs and see how much we're talking, but... What happened to it? Yeah. It broke on the inside because these kids beat the crap out of it. <laughs> well, what it about... Um, this is the one that comes out of the house? Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be expensive. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, isn't it look like a tree thing or yeah, whatever? Yeah, and right. Yeah. Well, I'd like well to we it. have to I'd make like sure that this year, if we have all these um, daycares coming, it's not an industrial place yet. Because I know they're not watching these kids. I know they're letting them all run around. We need to like send them uh, letters. Did, did we do we change did we change our park rules and so on and so forth for that? Yes. So we have had some daycares that have already signed up and they've paid the rental fee for the home of the brave. So that's okay. good. So the I think the word's getting but out there. They they pay it for what one? one yeah, they have to pay day? it for one day. Okay. Yeah. All right. They have to pay the rental. Okay. Which so daycare was that one? Uh, I don't remember which okay. one Kelly told me, but okay. I just remember her talking on the phone to somebody and they were going to pay the fee. A lot of them come out of Mason. So. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. 
think so I don't know we'll get we'll get costs on that it might be it might be a shock <laughs> factor fifty thousand probably yeah. <laughs> yeah okay well we got we got to do something we got to fix this slide because it's yeah we still have it boarded off so kids can't go down it because when they put the when they did the fix it was kind of rough at first and then Dave just sent me pictures today and it looks pretty 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 bad so let me see if I can pull it up okay. there's no way to police that no not unless you get somebody there all the time mm -hmm. and we're not going to do that yeah so you can see the what the inside looks like so it just didn't it yeah. just didn't repair the way we thought it would and they can't come and back and try who's again who's doing the repairs it's uh that uh, the company that installed it no it's a company that we use that molly works for the recreation something something but they're they come out of california to fix it so they had to wait for the temperature to be a certain temperature because it's a they like melt plastic is what they do to try to fix it because they can't get in there and actually take it out and put a new one in so they have to melt plastic over top of it to repair it to try to meld it back together Sounds like something I do <laughs> so it's the only way to fix it unless you just take the take it away because it's in that concrete structure okay. so did you tell them that it, it it's not working and yeah that's what we told them today like it this it and didn't they, work and, it, then, and then she said well most likely you're gonna have to replace it so I'm like, so I, I asked Dave, I was like, how much is that going to cost? <laughs> that's going to cost a lot. People, people, people. So that's all I got unless you guys have anything else. Okay. Yeah. I, one thing I do know, um, there's been a lot of trouble at Stonebridge, too. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the place that they're demolishing it. <laughs> just so you know, it. That's we've had to turn off all the drinking fountains mm -hmm. because they keep shoving mulch in the drinking fountain and they shove mulch in the toilets. So every pretty much every other day we're having to go there and plunge the toilets. Who so is? it's the kids, the kids from the par the apartments. From what we're finding out, there's a whole group of them that come up there during the day, like around 11 o'clock to about 12:30, and there's no adult supervision, and it's during the middle of the day. So we're, we're not really sure why they're there because they're really supposed to be in school. And um, can we send the sheriff up? Well, I've talked to the. I talked to Mike and I said somebody needs to start driving through that park but they it's the same kids every week and they come and they destroy the mulch and then they um, are taking they take food pop bottles water bottles we call the apartment complex and, and leave them, them away. oh yeah we could do that okay let's call the apartment complex and tell them but it would the only thing that I can think of that would solve the problem is if we remove the mulch from the playground and put down like regular turf so that the mulch problem goes away but then of course that's you know a lot of money, a lot of money that's a, too that's a thought yeah, mulch you have to replace every year that structure needs to be uh, replaced anyway wouldn't. right well the playground structure the thing is is they keep destroying it i mean they light it on fire they beat the crap out of it we're constantly replacing panels Don't we on have cameras it over there what's that Don't we have cameras over there yes and what are the cameras telling us? Well, I asked NECC if they would point it directly at the problem area that we're having so that we can go back and be able to review the tape so we can find out who it is that's doing the damage and address it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But that's why we have not turned the fountains on at Stonebridge because they keep shoving mulch in the fountain. Call the apartment complex. What are they going to do? Well, they're going. They should send out a note saying that you're destroying property. Yeah. And I mean, the only other option would be that just remove all the stuff, and then they won't have anything. I mean, do they really want that to happen? But I hope not. But and that's eventually what's going to happen. Right. If they keep destroying it, because mm -hmm. um, it's not going to be safe. Is it when it's in repair? Is it being used? playground equipment and stuff like that well yeah we've tried we've tried no, to mean, rope is it, it off. being used or is it just these kids coming over and damaging it both okay All right. hmm. yeah okay is that all is it okay I move to adjourn okay. second roll call mr. Brian aye mr. Beck aye Ms. Lee. aye I have one
one comment I'd like to make. Can we have Lou Ann send an email blast to all the HOAs about Sims Honors veterans? Oh, yeah. The, okay. the thing is, my wife says this to me all the time. Why aren't we advertising this? This is a great program, you know? We do advertise. Well, we put a sign in each of our parks. That's it. Well, it's on It's on the website, too, and it's it went out in the email blast that we sent out, like, in uh, May. Yeah, the first of the month. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But I, it, as we get closer to it, you know, like Friday or Monday, let's send out an email blast to all of the HOAs telling them about this wonderful okay. event and then the banner will go up we'll put a banner up yeah. next week i think it goes up at the very beginning of the week or something because yeah. it doesn't have a date it just says like at the end of this week there'll be blah 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 right it's, yeah so we'll put that up the end of this week okay Good. and then i know luann is going to be she'd called at least one retirement home but i asked her if she would call as many as she can come up okay because I think that's the best part. When you yeah. see like a little minivan, you know, pull up. And right, with half six people, yeah. Elderly yeah. veterans. Yeah. That, you know, yeah, Korean War vets and so on. There aren't too many those. around anymore. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I mentioned Seasons, Kenwood, The Lodge, you know, but we should just cast a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a great event for them. It is. Give them something to do on a Friday night. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> And while we're talking about Luann, did you, I, I sent you that letter that mm -hmm. she sent to me, right? Yeah. So yeah, I got that. But I'm, yes, I got it on for June. And for, just for your information, uh, I'm get, I got your email. I got one from Jeff. Nothing from the township. I'm not getting anything. I, Luann was going to send me a draft copy of the agenda so I could figure out what I was going to do in it and so on. And she let us a week ago today and she did it and I never got it so when she was out I called she was out Friday I text her or I sent an email to her which she got on Monday and she sent it again and I still didn't get it and I sent an email to Kim and I said let me know if you get this so Kim sent it back to me saying yeah I got it I didn't get it I'm not getting anything from the township and it's started like is it going in the junk? 16th. Is it going in junk? Shouldn't. I haven't looked in junk. But I looked to see if I blocked it by accident or any of that stuff. I know. I'll say something to our IT people, but I know that we've been working on different um, lines of defense on okay. security because we don't. Well, that's fine. Just don't we send me any. We're IT people and we're trying to beef up like our cyber yeah. stuff. So we've got like double and triple lines of okay. and it's actually trying to, you know, filter out all that stuff and okay. like phishing attacks and all that kind of stuff. So right. I don't know if maybe that's affecting it, but I'll ask. Okay, please. Okay. I, have, I, I mean, I'm getting stuff from you guys, but I'm not getting anything.